What's going on today, guys? I'm here with Bruce Rude from Rick Rude's Transmission, and today we're here with the front end, well, the front diff from 2012 and up half ton Dodge. It's a kit that involves uh, a new shaft, clip, seals, bearings, and everything you need to basically remove the passenger side housing, um, replace the shaft, and reassemble it back in the vehicle. Cool. So we're going to start taking this apart, and we'll get you guys a little bit closer view of what we, uh, what these guys have done here, and the kit they put together. So we're going to start by. Uh, Removing the four 12 mil headed bolts. Um, you can leave the, the actual right on the diff or right on the housing for now. Um, pull that down with it. Okay. Okay, so after we get all the bolts there, I'm just going to pop this actuator off and out of the way. break free quite easily, just a reusable molded gasket. And we're going to get a hammer and a flat screwdriver. I'm just going to break this seal here between the mating flange and the diff. They usually corrode, or at least up here in Canada they do. So try to pry evenly. And it should pop right off. So this will be the only part that you're removing from the from the truck. At that point, the actuator will be off, and then we'll pull the the collar off. Now the collar's the same either way, and it's got the tapered teeth, so you can't put it back in. So once you get it to the bench, this is what you're going to be left with. Of course, these splines are quite stripped as well. Pretty much the same on all of them. So on the inside, there's going to be an small or a fairly large but eyelet snap ring that we'll have to remove before we can pull the shaft out from the inside. Okay, I used a set of 90 degree snap ring pliers. Um, just a small compress compression and then it'll just pull out. After that, you can use a rubber mallet or steel, um, just give it a quick, quick tap down and it should fall right out. Okay, once the roller bearings fallen down, uh, you can basically pull the shaft out. Set that to the side, um, hold on to the, the dust deflector there, and then you're left with an empty housing. Um, you'll do there's only one more part that you're going to need off the shaft and that's your smaller snapper so another set of snapping pliers just open that up once the snapper breaks free um, you've got everything you need and the old shaft and bearing can be set to the side you want to dig into the kit. In the kit, we don't have a, a dust deflector or the snap rings, but we should have a seal, some of the new roller bearing for on the shaft, a cage needle bearing for the housing. Now, the needle bearing on the housing doesn't always change that easily, so you may uh, you may choose to leave it in there and just reuse it, which you can, but it's in the seal or it's in the kit if you need it. So we've got a seal. Um, your needle roller bearing and your roller ball bearing. The shaft's going to come with a new snap ring as well as a new bearing in the end. Start by reinstalling the roller ball bearing. Of course I'm going to use a press um, but essentially just put the bearing firmly down against this shoulder um, and then you'll have enough clearance to put the, the smaller of the two snap rings in. You want to get a square and if you can press on the inside race of the bearing um, but you know not everybody has an arbor press so use your uh, use your common sense try to get it on squarely and if you do have to tap it just try to tap on the inner race only not to uh, not to damage the bearing. Uh, so now we're going to take our smaller snap ring put it back on just spread it and it uh, 
it should snap it back into the groove. There we go. Um, so there's your assemble shaft. Set that to the side. And we're gonna work on the housing. So this is a blasted housing that we had out there. Um, the needle bearing has already been taken out, or sorry, the uh, cage needle bearing. You can tap it out from the inside. There is a shoulder right on the in, or right in here that prevents it from being driven in. So you will have to either use a long flat blade to knock it out, or you can cut it out, or again, you can reuse it if you wish. So we'll take this out, and we're gonna go back to our arbor press and just press it in flush against that shoulder. So there's the the bearing assembled in. You got two ways you can do it. You can press the seal in next. Um, or you can assemble the shaft and press the seal in around the shaft. So I'm going to put the shaft in first. Just drop it in like so. And uh, you could press it. I'm just going to use a, a flat disc and a maul just to seat the bearings down in place. Once it's down, you want to give her a spin, make sure everything went well, and reinstall the snap. Mm -hmm. So what we did there, just seat that snap ring down in the groove, ensure it still turns well. Um, and now would be the time if you did have some oil, maybe throw some lube on the bearings, just turn it, make sure it's in there well before you flash it up, start driving it. Uh, next is gonna be your seal. Um, truthfully, you just you, you need to make sure that you get it in square. You wanna put it into a depth of approximately 400 thou deep, so even if you say half an inch from the, uh, from the shoulder. Um, I've got a disc that I use just to make sure it's square, but Again, with any radial seal, you just want to make sure that it's even all the way around and it's on the, the smooth surface. So, and go ahead and tap this down. Throw a little lube on the, on the seal. And also, if you do have some grease, whether it be wheel bearing grease, anything, uh, just pack the spring. Prevents it from falling off when you're tapping or pressing it in. So, put that down. Give it a slight tap down to seat it flush. And then uh, I'll use this disc with a little shim just to make sure I get, get it to the proper depth. Okay. It's good and even. Seals in, turns free. Uh, the, the last thing to do to assemble the housing is gonna be to put this little dust deflector on. And uh, a lot of the times they hold their tension and they'll snap down onto this shoulder and stay in place. Other times you may need to take a small pair of pliers and just work this edge in a little bit just to retain that tension, so. And there you go, there's the new shaft in. Now we just gotta put it back on the diff. Basically, work backwards from where we started. Uh, you'll wanna put your collar on. That, and then take your actuator. Uh, like I said, up here it does corrode a bit, so a small skim of silicone or RTV could work fine just to ensure a good seal. It is a reusable gasket, so. Once you throw that back on, then it's just your four 12 mil bolts. Um, and then 
simply slide it back onto the differential. So at this point, hopefully you uh, you have your housing back on your diff. It's all up in your truck. Um, and the only thing we got left to do is to put the CVs back in. And this will come to the part that's really going to save this and prevent it from happening again. The, what they're going to do is the small hole is going to seal around the base of this here shaft. And then the larger opening is going to come over your CV seal and keep the weather out of your splines, keep the grease on them. So this is the most frustrating part of the whole job because they are very tight. You're going to have two boots in your kit. One will have a bit of a, a taller shoulder on the small opening and that's going to be for the passenger side and it's only because we have so much shaft here to use that we figure we may as well have as much ceiling surface as possible um, but the truth is you can use any sort of axle spline grease anything to help um, throw a little grease on the splines here and there's two ways to do it you can either small slide the small opening down over the shaft first or put the large over top of your cv both are very tight so for this purpose, I'm going to slide this down over. Just need to work it down over top of that little circlet groove. So a small flat screwdriver just to stretch it over can help. Once you get it started, it will work its way around. It's probably easier on the truck when it's fixed. Then once you get it down. We want to just put it up against this here the deflector um, and then it's going to be sealing well against the base of that opal shaft. The next step is going to be your, your circlet. You put your circlet back on. Um, use a flat screwdriver or a pair of snap ring pliers to do so. Once you get it started, just pull it down when it's snap into place. A little more grease because every little bit's going to help. The next is the hard part of trying to get the, the larger opening over top of the CV boot. Okay, so once you get the outer lip of the boot started, you want to get underneath and just kind of work it around. Okay, so that's assembled there. Um, basically what you'll have is you'll have the shaft sealing against the, the small output shaft. The rest of the boot comes over and just seals against the outer surface of your CV. Always make sure you replace the CV shaft as well as your output shaft. If one spline's worn, the other one's compromised as well, no matter how good it may look. Just make sure that it clips in place well on the circlip so it won't pop off. And there is a second boot in the kit that works for your driver's side as well. It doesn't have quite the shoulder on it as the other side. And that's only because on the driver's side there's not much of a land sticking out. Not much sealing surface between the CV and that. But it will butt up against this dust deflector as well. So thanks a lot for coming out. Appreciate it. All right, so as you guys can see, these guys got a pretty cool fix for the 2012 and up half ton Dodges. Um, right now, they're available obviously through you guys, and yeah. you guys have got them on eBay. But yeah, we do have a eBay store that you can get them on, uh, cool. Driveline Depot. We'll put the uh, the item number at the bottom of the, the video, and um, you can also give us a call directly. Uh, it's 902 538 1052. Um, yeah, look it up if you got any questions at all. Feel free to give us a call. Don't be scared to give these guys a call. They can ship directly to you, um, no matter where you're at. And uh, yeah, I've been dealing with them for a while and they're awesome to deal with, so.